Hey everyone, welcome back. As a forewarning, what we are showing today is most likely a bug. It is so strong, I'm reaching 130 to 140 KPM on a pure mainly build. No AoE, just good old hack and slash. Yes, it even completely nukes acolytes instantly so long as they're in range, through their armor. I don't know when it will be patched, and it's a lower investment setup. I also recommend turning down your GPU particle settings if you're going to use this. If you don't, and you kill a ton, as in 10 to 20 plus enemies instantly in a squad, your game may freeze for a few seconds and host migrate your squad. Honestly, the lag should only happen in solo, as if your teammates are killing things in squad runs, there shouldn't be enough enemies for you to kill to cause this to happen. But if you are in a squad run, I strongly do not recommend trying to kill massive hordes of enemies at once. Today's explanation is simple. We are using an infinite damage loop mechanic. Exodia Force, a Zaw Arcane, has a 50% chance to inflict AoE damage 6 meters around you when your Zaw causes a status effect. It has no cooldown. This is important. This basically turns your Zaw into a pseudo exalt when it procs. However, unlike pseudo exalts, it actually benefits from Banes, but it also has 0% crit chance and cannot be boosted by crit buffs under any circumstances. Not even Arcane Avenger, Adarza's Cat's Eye, or Harrow's Covenant. It also has 0% status chance to stop it from procking itself again, but there is a way around this. While this can make even pure status zones, yes, this is modded entirely for status, have decent and do enough damage to kill even without slash, the true benefit is how it has zero cooldown. Yes, swinging through a crowd and hitting 5 enemies to proc 5 status effects causes the arcane to proc 5 times. Procking 2 statuses on the 5 enemies each would make Exodia Force trigger 10 times maximum, easily clearing out the crowd. This means not only does Exodia Force have linear scaling to number of procs, but it also has quadratic scaling to number of enemies hit per swing. Those 5 AoEs in the group of 5 enemies? Every AoE hits the remaining 4 surrounding enemies as well. This means a 5 times explosion actually hits 5 squared, or 25 times. 6 enemies would cause 36 hits, hence quadratic scaling. But none of this matters today, as while this can already be strong, Exodia Force still suffers against armor and isn't useful in endurance. But how about an infinite damage loop? Once upon a time, Saren could proc Exodia Force with Toxin Lash. Not only that, but Exodia Force's own AoE would trigger Toxin Lash again, causing an infinite cascade. You can still do this with Garuda Seeking Talents. While you have to cast Garuda's 4 in each group to do this, the flip side is it being significantly stronger than Toxin Lash. Toxin Lash does not bypass armor, whereas Seeking Talents does. Not only does this make Seeking Talents do more damage overall via bleeds, but it also reduces the likelihood of your game crashing since the infinite loop ends sooner from enemies bleeding out. This is the reason why the Saren method could crash your game from hitting even just a few enemies, whereas Garuda requires actual hordes to be killed at once to lag your game out. There is also an augment, Blending Talents, that turns our 4 into an instant radial tap cast instead of a double tap or hold cast cone hitbox. There are spare slots on the build today to decide whether you want to use the augment, or maybe Kavat's Grace, to stop heavy landing animations caused by casting her 4 in the air and failing to aim glide before landing. Kavat's Grace was recently buffed to remove heavy landings completely, instead of having a height or velocity limit for its effects. Let's look at the Exodia Force build first. Exodia Force makes a massive difference on today's build, even alone. This is how much damage this Zon does without Exodia Force. This is how much it does with Exodia Force. It procs per proc, meaning surpassing 100% status chance, makes it roll chances of more than one proc per swing. And remember, this damage you see will cascade infinitely with Seeking Talons, as well as creating a new slash proc per loop. The Zaw I made was a Plague QR Cicala Iquana 2 Jai. It is the same Zaw parts I used from my Exodian Contagion Primer build. I chose Plague QR because it innately gives viral, and it can only be obtained from Plague Star or the Halloween event from Daughter on Deimos. It allows me to prime viral without even needing to mod for it, but other strikes work as well because the main importance is building a Zaw today with as high status as possible. Whether it has viral innately or not doesn't really matter. This saw has 36% status at base. Anything built similarly should work the same. You can preview stats at Hawk's Anvil before committing to buying the parts, even if you don't own them. I also built a staff because staffs are just comfortable to use with good stance movement. 
Your actual damage from Exodia Force is also affected by stance multipliers as well, so technically, the neutral combo with 641% damage percent per second is the best choice. But since we have an infinite loop cascade from Seeking Talons, it doesn't really matter. Since Exodia Force works like a pseudo exalt, we mod accordingly. Base damage, status and elementals. The AoE of Exodia Force is centered around your body and has a 1.0 follow through. While range does not improve the 6 meter radius, and the AoE does have fall off, it does increase the number of enemies you can hit with the melee itself, causing even more Exodia Force procs. Therefore, I double stacked Primed Reach and Spring Loaded Blade for 8 meter sweeps. Attack speed is also important so you can just apply hits faster. I'd opt for Quickening over Primed Fury because 1. It's cheaper to max and less capacity cost, 2. Extra combo chance lets you hit 12 times combo faster for weeping wounds, and 3. Once you are fully stacked, a single swing or 2 is enough to kill entire crowns, making Primed Fury's slight swing speed advantage pointless. Weeping Wounds adds a massive plus 440% status, letting our Zaw reach 237.6% at 12x combo. This means we proc at least 2 status effects per enemy we hit, or at least 2 chances to roll Exodia Force per enemy hit. We go pure viral to boost the damage of Exodia Force, as well as the looping slash procs created from Seeking Talons. The Primed Smite does in fact carry over into Exodia Force and also Seeking Talons. I'm unsure if it's single or double dips, but it's one of the few remaining mods we can use to buff the pulse damage. More pulse damage equals lesser loops to kill equals less lag. And no, condition overload does not affect Exodia Force scaling, which is the reason why we use Prime Pressure Point to start with. And it does affect the pulse. The primer build is generic epitaph viral radiation. This isn't that important, you could shoot it to spread radiation procs and reduce aggro focused on you. But really, it's the secondary dexterity arcane to boost combo duration for your Zaw. Your primary weapon also has no purpose except amalgam serration for faster sprint speed and dexterity for another 7.5 seconds. We're also taking Nairmon for power spike, so we never lose all our combo, even if timer runs out. How about Garuda herself? This build actually runs some negative duration since none of her abilities care about it today except her 1 that much. An aura 1 gives you knockdown immunity while it's active, but since it only lasts 14.5 seconds, I would rather just slot Prime Sure Footed on this build. Rolling Guard to remove status effects because we're running a shield gating build today. Brief Respite alone is enough to restore all your shields every time you cast Ensnare or Seeking Talons so long as you have a Decay Dragon Key equipped. The amount of iframes you have on her should keep you alive between the grouping casts. We went all in on range to maximize KPM, survivability, and comfort on Ensnare cast frequency. It gives Ensnare a 26.5 meter pull of radius and 23.85 meters on Blending Talons if you're using the Augment. Operator Magus Elevate helps to offset health drain from bloodletting. I left efficiency at 100% so that bloodletting twice restores your entire energy bar. Blending Talons is the flex slot. You can either use this for a 26.5 meter bleed radius for quality of life instead of the annoying base 4 functionality, or use Kavant's Grace to ignore heavy landings completely. You could also drop Natural Talent for 2 casting speed Archon shards so you can fit both. Primed Flow is because Bloodletting restores percent energy max instead of a flat amount. The Molt Augmented slot is flex. You don't really need to hit 100% bleed chance, but it is recommended. Alternatively, if you don't like Operator to heal via Megas Elevate, you can slot Molt Reconstruct so that Ensnare or Seeking Talons will heal you to full every time you cast it. You could also skip Blending Talents for Umbral Intensify, which pushes you to 100% bleed chance even without Molt Augmented. Lots of mix and match options. You could even run Primed Continuity here, albeit not 100% bleed chance, but it lets your 1 last 26 seconds, making it actually usable and letting you skip Prime Sure Footed if you don't own it for Kavat's Grace. Arcane Strike is strongly recommended for comfier Zaw swinging. Panzer is the same as always, and is really only here if you screw up with bloodletting, putting you at 2 HP when you have no shields. Martyr will keep you alive with a tiny iframe so you can recover and heal from your misplay. Devolution to keep itself alive, Radar, and Vacuum. Since that doesn't really do anything today because we have bloodletting to restore energy. Playing the build is rather simple. You cast your 1 if you want for anti-knockdown, it's not too important. But the main rotation is cast and snare on some group of enemies. Then cast your 4, Augment, or not. Hit them with your Zaw melee and watch everything die. Find a new group, cast and snare, cast your 4, rinse and repeat. Even Eximus units die instantly with a single hit or within 1 second. Everything dies once your combo builds to 12x for weeping wounds. Since you cast your 4 so often, it is up to you whether or not you want to use the Blending Talons Augment for quality of life. 
I did not use it in any of the showcase footage today and still reached 130 plus KPM, so it is by preference rather than mandatory. Cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed, I'm trying my best to get you new information out always, as soon as possible. Like I've done with Citrine's last wish, stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis, as well as the earliest Duviri content. Don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video, thank you all for watching, and see you all next time!